Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. That's a national overseer from Liberia. Please welcome him to Ghana. Aquaba. Everybody praise the Lord. I welcome you tonight. A night of power. A night of miracle. A night of salvation. A night of redemption. A night of a purposeful, glorious visitation for everyone. A word of prayer before we begin. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Great God, glorious God, eternal God, the one that is able to do all things anytime, every time, anywhere, everywhere. We're asking, Lord, tonight, the heavens will be opened upon everyone. And your glorious visitation will bring salvation, redemption, healing, deliverance, miracle to everyone in Jesus' name. Fill every heart with your joy. Let everyone receive from heaven. Bless everyone without exception. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we're looking at the Acts of the Apostles. And I'm reading from chapter 15, verse 14. Acts chapter 15, verse 14. It says, Simon... I declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. The verse talks about the verse talks about visit. God at the first did visit. He visited the Gentiles. He talks about the unchanging God. The supernatural God. The God that they same forever. This God that says, I am God, I change not. If he does not change, he visited the Gentiles at that time. He's still visiting the Gentiles today. And what was the purpose? To take out of them a people for his name. He changes not. What's his purpose today? In God visiting us. The great God visiting us. The glorious God visiting us. Remember, it's an unchanging God. His purpose at that time was to take out of them a people for his name. Take out of them a people for his glory. A, a people for his pleasure. If he has not changed, his purpose has not changed. And the purpose is to take out, select out, choose out a people for his name, his glory, his pleasure. God's unchanging purpose of the present visitation. The glorious visitation we are here for. God ordained it. God began it. God continues that great 
glorious visitation. And we need to know in our hearts, in our lives, we need to know from personal experience God's unchanging purpose for this present visitation at this present hour here at the Alpha location everywhere all over the world. And so as we are here tonight, God's own purpose for you is to select you and to choose you and to bring you out God's purpose for you tonight for the present glorious visitation is to leave it to lay his hands on you and draw out you out of the whole global world for himself he says that's mine that's mine that's mine and as we respond to his visitation here today he takes you out as a person for himself for his name Simon has declared, other people have declared, and I come to declare to you how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them, out of the Gentiles, a people for his name. And in verse 15, it tells us, it says, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. This is not a personal private idea of Peter of Simon. To this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. That God visits the Gentiles. He visits the nations of the world. He visits all the tribes of the world. To take out a people for his name. In verse 16. It says after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is falling down. And I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up. Verse 17. That the residue of men, the remainder of men, the remnant remaining, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, says the Lord who doeth not only that he did, not only that he will do, who doeth all these things. It says he is still at work. Here today in our midst, he is still making a choice of people out of the Gentile nations and take them out for his name, for his glory, for his pleasure, for his kingdom. Verse 18, now, known unto God are all his works, known unto God are all his activities, known unto God are all these events from the beginning of the world. How grateful we are to God that we are not here accidentally. 
how grateful to God we are that God knows we'll be here. God knows we'll be talking about his glorious visitation. God knows we'll be talking about his choosing out people for his name because known unto God are all his works, all that we're doing here tonight from the beginning of the world. So tonight, that's what we are talking about. God knows you are there. God has his eyes on you. And God is going to pick you up and bring you to his kingdom tonight in Jesus' name. God's unchanging purpose for the present visitation. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the predicted revelation of his awaited visitation. Remember from the beginning of the world, the prophets and the preachers and the, and the proclaimers of God's glory, they've been talking about it, that God will visit the Gentiles. Having heard that he will visit us, the good thing and the beautiful thing is that we await that visitation. And the people that knew about that, they were waiting. When will it be? When will it be? And now the time has come that he will visit the people who are waiting for that visitation. The predicted revelation of his awaited visitation. Number two is the present realization of his awakening visitation. He comes as prophesied, he comes as predicted. He comes in the present hour and he visits us with a glory and that awakens us. We had been dormant and dull and sleepy. We didn't know why we're here on earth. Our creation, our existence, our coming to the kingdom. We didn't know why. His visitation wakes us up. The present realization of his awakening visitation. You come to him. He comes to you. You touch him. He transforms you. All of a sudden, you are awakened to the purpose of your existence. Here on earth, and your preparation to go into the heavenly kingdom eventually. The present realization of his awakening visitation. Number three is the personal restoration after an acknowledged visitation. When Jesus comes, when he comes to you and he awakens your soul and awakens your spirit, when Jesus comes and you acknowledge that visitation from heaven, you come to a restoration. He created man, man with glory, man with power. Man with purpose, man with pursuit, man that had the purpose of creation reaching clearly on the table of his heart. We lost that. The dignity of man, the dignity of the created man, the value, the virtue of the created man. We lost that. And now he comes. 
He visits us. He teaches us. He transforms us. And life takes on a new value. Life takes on a new virtue. And there's a personal restoration to what we could have been. A personal restoration to what we could have done. A personal restoration to the height and the length and the breadth of what the created and recreated man could be. The personal restoration after an acknowledged visitation. There will be a restoration in your life today. A restoration in our lives today. He visits you. He passes heaven's virtue into your life. And then there is a personal, a no-so restoration in every heart and every life. Let's look at them one by one before we have that personal touch and transformation from God. Number one is the predicted revelation of his awaited revelation. Already I've read to you from uh, Acts chapter 15 verse 14. God visited the Gentiles. And there's no surprise. He said he will do it. And there is no argument about it. The people have been waiting for that visitation. And as we are here today, you should be awaiting that visitation. Here is what God has said. Here is what God said he will do. And because we know he's a faithful God, and every word he said will be fulfilled. He said he will visit you. And you have come for this glorious visitation. And tonight, there will be fulfillment in your life. Look at Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 4 verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. The people, the people that God had made, they had descended into the dungeon, into the prison, into the valley of great, great darkness. As we look at our lives, in comparison with the Bible, we see the light in the world. As we compare our lives with the world, we see the darkness into which we are falling. The darkness of Satan. He has no light. He has no good knowledge. He has no good news. And we are falling into the lies and deception and the darkness of Satan. We even search there. It's like we are tired of looking for the light and we have searched inside that dungeon of darkness of Satan. The people which search in darkness, in the darkness of sin. Adam and Eve were created they were in the light. Like the angels were in the light, they were in the light. And then the serpent Satan came to deceive them. They fell into the darkness, the darkness of sin. Righteousness is light. Holiness is light. Upright standing is light. They fell from the light. They fell into the darkness of sin. Evil spirits carry darkness with them. 
and the whole world has fallen into the darkness of the God of this world and the darkness of evil spirit and evil power of occultism and secret society. Not that they were walking through it, they were staying there, they were sitting in darkness. When they announced visitation came, they saw a great light. And to them we sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. It is the coming of Christ, the light of the world. It is the coming of his world that shines light into the darkness of every man. And he says, the people, the people, the people like you and I, that sat in the past in darkness, the people like you and I, that search in the region and shadow of death. Now we see great light. Now we see the way to come out of that darkness. Because of that predicted revelation that there will be that glorious visitation. And everyone now, because Christ has come, Everyone now, because Christ already has made a sacrifice and he said, it is finished. We cannot wait prayerfully and say, he has come, he will come to me. He will come to you. Amen. You will see the great light. You see the glorious light. You will see the appearance of Christ coming unto you. If you are as you are awaiting that glorious visitation. And then it says light will spring up for you tonight. And all the doubts and all uh, the fear and all the deadly things coming around, the light of Christ coming to you tonight will drive everything away. <laughs> darkness of sin will flee. The darkness of sickness, suffering, everything will flee. The darkness of Hell will get out of your life. You see, I, I thought hell is in the future. Yes, you know, when they cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, the people who didn't get into the fire and just the flame of the fire came out, slew them. And even though people have not gotten into hell, the flame, the idea, and all the things there coming before time, all the darkness of hell approaching them, everything will get away from you today. Look at verse 17 there. In verse 17, from that time Jesus began, from that time that the light came, from that time that the visitation from heaven came, from that time that Jesus Christ sent by the Father to bring the awaited a visitation. From that time he began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now the darkness is about to go. And the light is about to come. The glorious visitation is about to take effect in our lives. 
it's time you are now coming to the light that will drive all the messengers of death away from your life in Jesus name But look at what Jesus said. He said, repent. Then he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That word repent, what does that mean? Somebody said, I have repented. And I said, tell me what you mean by that. What have you repented from? And what have you turned away from? He said, I don't, Pastor, I don't know details. I just know I repented. There we are. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I say, where are you now? He said, I'm in the kingdom of God. I said, what's the kingdom of God? He said, Pastor, I don't know. All I know is, I am now in the kingdom of God. I said, well, give me one reason that to know that you have come into the kingdom of God. Mm, he said, I was baptized as an infant. I said, say another thing. I take the holy communion. I said, tell me another thing. Pastor, you know, I've been to Jerusalem and I even drank of the water of Jordan. I said, please, tell me the real thing. He said, I give money to the beggars. Okay, I said, let me tell you. Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 19. When Jesus said, repent. What he meant is all that I'm reading about now, they symbolize those who live in darkness. And when you hear Christ saying, repent, come out of darkness, come into the light. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Uh, have you noticed that all those things, they are done in the dark? They are done under cover? They are done in secret? They are done not allowing the eyes of others to see that. They are the works of darkness. Adultery. That man is still in the dark. Fornication. That woman is still in the dark. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. All that is done in darkness. Whatever name you bear, whatever church you attend, whatever title you hold, if you are involved in that, you are in darkness. Repent means come out of darkness and come into the light. In verse 20, it says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. <laughs> We're not talking about going to church, not going to church. We're not talking about going to Jerusalem, not going to Jerusalem. We're not talking about going on pilgrimage, not going on pilgrimage. We're talking of what shows a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, an educated one, an illiterate. What shows you are still in darkness, but now Christ has come. And we'll see a great light because of his visitation. And you come out of darkness and you come to the light of the kingdom of God.
Then he talks about variance. Uh, you know, you, you cannot really pin them down. They vary so much. Now, they lean like this. And when they talk, you think they're in the light. But the other time, they vary. They're in variance. They talk again. You think they're in the deepest dungeon of darkness. Emulations. Those are the hero worshippers. The man you see on the billboard is a smoker of wheat. But because of the way he does his hair, and because of the way he carries his bottle, and the way, because of the way he appears bold and aggressive, they say, that's my hero. And they emulate him. They try to do as he is doing. The man is going on his way to the deepest, everlasting darkness, and they emulate him. Emulations. It shows that you are still in the dark and the lord is telling you your day has come the expected light has come repent come out of that and come into the light of righteousness it talks of it talks of Wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. And then in verse 21, it says, Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are the people, all those people, they sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And the Lord beckons on everyone. Look at the darkness in which you have been. Rise up. Come out. Come into the light. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You leave all these things. You turn away from them. You call upon the Lord. And you move away from them. And you move into the kingdom of God. How do you know that you have moved into the kingdom of God? Look at verse 22 there. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You now love the people you hated before. And joy. You used to have joy in adultery, but now you have joy in righteousness. Peace, not the kingdom, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23, meekness, pride is of darkness, is of Satan, meekness, lowliness is of Christ, is of the light, temperance, temperance. That means you are in control of your temper. When an angry man looks at you, you don't lose your temper. When somebody is taking uh, whatever into his mouth or through his nose that will endanger his life, that doesn't tempt you. You are temperate, you are controlled. When somebody is, uh, you know, kind of looking at this and that, and uh, he or she is enjoying uh, the pornography, doesn't, that doesn't arouse you to go into pornography with them. Temperance. Against such, there is no law. 
you have come into the kingdom you have come into the light the darkness moral darkness is gone and the light has now come and you have seen a great light and you come into the light of heaven and now you can see that God has visited them in the days of old Christ has now visited me turned my life around I am no more in darkness I am in the light number two we're looking at number two now and it's the present realization of his awakening visitation you know when we do religious things we leave that religious thing and we still sleep in sin like we used to do When we go to the assembly, we go to the temple, we go to the denominational church, we go anywhere after coming out, we still continue like we were. Our spirits are still asleep. Our souls still asleep. We don't have any conviction. We're just like we were before we went into that assembly. But when the divine visitation the awakening visitation comes upon us we wake up we say that's not good i'll not get there again this is the gospel the glad tidings the good things i will come into the uh, into the provision of the gospel He wakes us up. We are now at a large. We know that should not be my life. That will draw me back to darkness. But I wake up and I see I become a different man, a different woman. When that awakening visitation comes upon your life today, your life will never be the same again. God bless you for that. Amen. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, but all things that are, that are reproved are made manifest by the light. And whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, wherefore, he says, awake. It says, awake. While you are asleep, you are not in control of those dreams. They float in your mind, they float in your head. When you are asleep, the places you go in the dream, the things you do in the dream, you don't even know how to say, no, I don't want to do that because you are sleeping and you are dreaming. Sometimes, when the things, the dream, when they are not very good, they are terrifying, you'll be thinking inside that dream, I wish I'd come out of this. But you don't know how to come out. You cannot wake up by yourself. You're still having all those things. And the Lord is saying, as long as, as, as you're asleep, you go to church, you remain asleep, you read Bible, you remain asleep, you come to crusade, you remain asleep, you're still sleeping, and you have not awakened up. Then your life will be under the control of the power of darkness.
Are you conscious of your life? Are you in control of your life? Are you awake to what you are doing in life? Are you just being pushed on by an invisible power? And what you are pushed into, I wish I wasn't doing this. There's a power that will come from heaven and wake you up today. He'll so wake you up, you say no to that. He'll wake you up and you say, no way, I cannot go back to those directions anymore. Wherefore, he says, awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. That's saying, come out of there. That's saying, don't touch that thing again. You want life? You want light? You want heaven? You want his kingdom? You want a transformed life? You want a new life? Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. Don't say, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I just do them. I don't actually enjoy them. I feel guilty. I blame myself. Awake. Come out of darkness. Come to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And Christ shall give thee light. Tonight. Tonight. Christ shall give thee light. Tonight. It will wipe all the works of darkness away from your life. Tonight, a divine visitation will come upon your life personally and pointedly in Jesus' name. And Christ shall give thee light. That was he said about the Gentiles that God will visit them and give show them light. They've been sitting in darkness, but now Christ will bring light unto them. It is what we have been waiting for. And it is what he awakens us to a change, a transformation that comes in our lives. And then uh, all the works of darkness, like sickness, like suffering, uh, like disease, like demonic, uh, demonic attack, everything tonight will go. We cannot carry all the property of the dungeon of darkness. We cannot carry them with us and bring them to the light. It will make where you come to also a dungeon of darkness. Sickness, disease, infirmity, all the demonization and all the power of the evil spirit. As you come out of that dungeon of darkness, you leave everything behind in Jesus' name. As Jesus welcomes you tonight, He welcomes you into healing. He welcomes you into health. He welcomes you into deliverance. He welcomes you into dominion. Because you come to the light. All the powers of darkness and all the activities of darkness, they are swept up from your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah 53 verse 4. Surely, surely, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. That's why he said, come out of darkness. When you come to him, when you believe in him, when you repent as a demanded and you say i leave the past to be in the past and i come to my glorious future in christ 
then it will bear your grief and carry your sorrows away. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Our sins were laid on him. Our sickness laid on him. Our suffering laid on him. And then in verse 5, it says in verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. And bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes you are healed. With his suffering you are healed. At the weeping post she was weak for you. Tonight now as you come to Christ. And you come into his light. Healing, health, deliverance, dominion, victory, freedom has now come to you. How many of us can come for his salvation? How many of us can come to his life? How many of us can come to his deliverance? Look at verse 6. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All the sins you have committed, the iniquity of us all laid on him. And the infirmity of us all laid on him. The sins of us all laid on him. And the sicknesses of us all laid on him. As we repent and we come into the kingdom. And we believe on Jesus as Savior, Lord, and healer, and deliverer. All the heavy load we have been carrying from the past is taken away from us and laid on Christ. It's happening to you tonight. And now we come to a personal restoration. Restoration for you tonight. Total turning around for you tonight. Number three, the personal restoration after an acknowledged visitation. Accept it. Acknowledge it. Affirm it. And say, Christ came for me. Acknowledgement. Christ died for me acceptation christ has provided for me total restoration affirmation by faith he did it i accept he paid the price i acknowledge and i experience it now i affirm and it is that that takes you out of darkness effectively and brings you into the light of the good news of the glorious gospel. And it is now. Your salvation is now. Your healing is now. Your deliverance is now. But you must acknowledge the visitation. If somebody visited you, the door was open, he opened it and came in, and you didn't even look his direction. You were doing what you were doing. You were going where you were going. And you didn't even speak or say anything to acknowledge, he has come into my heart. You didn't accept him 
I don't know how he opened the door and came in. There must be acceptation. You must accept he came with forgiveness. He came with grace. He came with power. I accept. I acknowledge. I affirm. Have you met Christ? Yes, he came to my heart. He took away my love for darkness. And he gave me the love for the light. Can you affirm something I heard that Jesus touched you and transformed you? I affirm with all my heart. He called me. I responded. I came to him. He received me. And he gave me a new life. A new virtue in my life. The personal restoration after an acknowledged visitation. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted. I told you I was coming. You waited for me. I've come now. You have received me. This is the time accepted. In the day of salvation, have I succored thee? He makes this day your day of salvation. I succored thee. I helped thee. I supported thee. I secured thee. And then it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. It's the time to acknowledge him. I stand at the door and know. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in unto him and fellowship with him and sup with him. This is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. On the side of God, this is the day of your salvation. In the mind of God, in the plan of God, in the purpose of God, there's no other day. This is the day of your salvation. In the mind of Christ, in the purpose of his glorious visitation, this is the day of your salvation. No more argument. I go to church. No more argument. I read the Bible. No more argument. I had infant baptism. No more argument. Our pastor said I am a good Christian. Bless your pastor. Your pastor does not know you. He doesn't know what you do in darkness. He doesn't know what you do when he's not there. He doesn't know what you do when you manifest the works of the flesh. Forget about what your pastor said. Christ is saying, now is today, I will save you. Behold, now is the day of salvation is the day of your healing is the day of your miracle is the day of the supernatural in your life I accept say it. I accept I acknowledge I affirm Praise the Lord, your glorious day of visitation has now come. All we need now is sincerity, honesty, transparency unto our God. 
Somebody wants to give you uh, a large amount of money. $100,000 genuine. And you have some fake ten hundred dollars fake. The real line that shows that the dollar you have is genuine. That line is not there. You have fake currency. And a good man of a good heart, he came to you. He said, do you know that is fake? You are holding on to it. Surrender them. You will not be charged for holding fake currency. Surrender them. And I will give you much more and it will be totally genuine that has the mark of heaven on it. Joyfully and happily, I accept, I acknowledge, I affirm, I surrender all the fake religious practices I have, I surrender them. And I say, now I'm ready. I accept the gift of salvation from heaven. And tonight, you are going to have it. Accept genuine healing from heaven. And tonight, you are going to have it. Praise the Lord. Your faces are shining already as somebody getting something from God. It's bowed and eyes closed. The genuine thing has come from heaven. A glorious visitation. An awaited visitation. An awakening visitation. An acknowledged visitation. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that genuine salvation from God. You want that genuine forgiveness from God. You want that genuine change of life, transformation of life from God. Where are you? Raise up your hand there. Heaven will recognize you. Heaven will know that you are there. God bless you. There is up that hand. And say, Lord, I accept. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I affirm. I want it beyond any other sin I could have on earth. If you're raising up your hand, you'll stand up wherever you are. Salvation, this is your day. And forgiveness, this is your day. Genuine experience with God, this is your day. Passing on and coming out of darkness and coming into the light, this is your day. As you raise up that hand, please stand up. What are you? Heaven wants to recognize you. Stand up. So that you can have this genuine salvation from the Lord himself. You see all those works of the flesh? They will land you in eternal perdition in hellfire forever and ever. When you turn, when you repent, then the fruit of the Spirit will come into your life. I accept, I affirm, I acknowledge. As we're standing up, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, I come out of darkness, I come into the light of the glorious gospel. Tell the Lord, I'll not go back to the darkness again. I accept your grace. I accept the new life that brings me into genuine salvation from heaven. 
tell the Lord, I accept your forgiveness. I acknowledge this glorious day of visitation in my heart. I affirm that you cannot fail. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Amen. 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 I pray for you now. Father, we thank you for the predicted revelation that you will send your only begotten son and the visitation will bring salvation the joy of salvation the life of those who are saved the transformation that comes with your gracious visitation Lord, all these who are raising up their hands who are standing here and online everywhere, as you have said, give them your salvation now in Jesus' name. Change of heart, change of life, change of direction, change in their personality. Grant you everyone right now in Jesus' name. They have accepted, make it real. They have acknowledged, make it real. And they have affirmed that Christ has come into them. Let the transformation in their lives be evident from now on in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness with everyone that they are now children of God in reality. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has answered your prayer. Please keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And we'll call on our overseer to help us now with this counseling session. And then we'll come back. All our infirmities and sicknesses are laid on him. You'll not carry any disease back home with you tonight in Jesus' name. Let our counselors... Stay with the people there and start taking their statistics. Names, telephone number, and all the vital pieces of information right on that sheet of paper. Please, let's write legibly. Use capital letters if possible. Your read name. Let's not do the work of darkness again. We are out of them all. And as we are writing our names, the rest of us, we are in prayer mood, we are praying. That as the Lord takes away all sins tonight, he also takes away all sicknesses. That tonight, as we have been told, we will not go back home with any disease. If you believe that, keep on praying now. You acknowledge you affirm, you accept, and it's done. Our counselors, uh, please uh, increase your speed. And please, don't leave the people. Still stay with them. So that after the prayer session, after our Father and the Lord has blessed us, 
and connected us to the power in heaven. Then you begin to bring out the people from where they are to testify to the, the glorious visitation of God Almighty. And as we are finishing, we still uh, we give the papers back to the supervisors. Thank you very much. The supervisors are collecting already. Please give them the slips. Let's not have too many counselors uh, over one person. Let's distribute ourselves across the crowd. Online, if, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ tonight, after our pastor's message, if you look or if you are watching by television now, or you are watch, watching over the YouTube or Facebook or any of the social media handles, you will see a link. Uh, gckhq.org slash connect. Click the link and fill the form that appears. That will help us to assist you further in your new walk with Christ. And if you are listening via the radio or television and you are on phone, this phone number you can send SMS to or WhatsApp to these phone numbers. 234 plus 234-915444. Nine two six three. I take the number again. Send your SMS or WhatsApp uh, message to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. In Ghana, this is our number for GCK Secretariat. Send your own SMS to plus two three three zero five five two four five one nine five five. GCK Ghana Secretariat plus two three three zero five five two four five one nine five five. Let's our uh, continue with the registration. And please, let nobody be moving around except the counselors. Everybody should be praying now. If I were you, I wouldn't just sit down and be looking. I would be praying and asking the Lord God to perfect all things concerning me tonight. Wherever you are on this planet and you are connected to GCK in Accra, Ghana, it's time for you now to be praying that you will not go tonight empty-handed and that glorious visitation from Christ will wrought wonders in your life.
Our counselors, please wave to us if we are through. Supervisors, please wave to us if everybody has been counseled. People are praying already. People are praying already. And stand upon your feet now. This is the hour you've been waiting for. Salvation we've received. Now healing. Now wonders. Now freedom. And then launch our tomorrow, 3 o'clock. All those who give in their lives to Jesus Christ tonight. That's a launch our fellowship at the pavilion tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's ready now. Our father is here. Amen. Praise the Lord. He has laid all your sicknesses on Christ our healer. By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. I accept. Say it out aloud. I acknowledge, I affirm, you are healed already. You have any challenge, any sickness, any disease, and you accept you are healed tonight. You raise up one hand, and you lay the other hand where you have a challenge. And all those sicknesses, diseases, infirmities, they are laid on Christ on your behalf. One hand up. The other hand where you have the challenge, the sickness, the ailment, the disease. And after the final amen, I accept, I acknowledge, I affirm. Are we ready? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your declaration. Christ said, it is finished. All our sicknesses are laid on him. All our infirmities are laid on him. All our pains, all our griefs are laid on him. Heaven has declared that. And Lord, everyone here tonight, we accept. Everyone here tonight, we affirm. Everyone here tonight, we acknowledge that all our sicknesses, whatever the name, whatever, however long it had been standing, Lord, we accept tonight, we're healed in Jesus' name. You cannot fail. Your word cannot fail. Your power cannot fail. And what you said you have done, we accept you've done it in Jesus' name. And I pray that every sickness represented here, every sickness online, every sickness over the radio, over the television, by those who are watching, Lord, tonight we affirm Everything is laid on Christ in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. External in your skin and internal in your body. We acknowledge tonight you are healed in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord touch you right there. Pain. Get out in Jesus' name. Swelling, get out in Jesus' name. Blindness, get out in Jesus' name. Deafness and dumbness, come out in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis and HIV, come out in Jesus' name. 
that ulcer and that cancer be healed in Jesus name whatever the name of the sickness I command now by the name of the Lord be healed in Jesus name Lord, I pray everywhere now confirmation. Everywhere now manifestation. Everywhere the operation of your power, of your spirit in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb be healed in Jesus' name. The blind and the people that have eyesight that is deep be healed in Jesus' name. You have stroke, you have paralysis or whatever. I pray the power of God will come upon you now as you accept your healing. There will be a manifestation right now in Jesus' name. Lord, do your work of mercy in everyone. Healing in everyone. Deliverance for everyone. The confirmation of total healing in everyone tonight. Lord, we know it is done. Confirm it. Let your people see it and feel it and experience it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We accept. Thank you, Lord. We affirm. Thank you, Lord. We acknowledge by your stripes we are already healed. Thank you, Lord, it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Check up yourself now. You'll see it is done. What you have accepted, you will also feel and experience in your life, in your body right there. Counselors, check up with them, check up on them. And as you see what has happened, now you can come out, you have a testimony already. The Lord bless you and make your healing permanent in Jesus' name.